Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. Uh, I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website, which is eight self-improvement lessons. Lesson four in the website focuses on improving your relationships. I've been a marriage and family therapist for 31 years. In that time, among a lot that I have learned, uh, I've learned something about why some mates have romantic or sexual affairs, meaning they, quote, cheat. That's a fairly widespread phenomenon. It causes a great deal of heartache, especially when adults are parents. I want to offer you four ideas as to why mates cheat in hopes that this will help you avoid cheating or understand your own in case you have done this. Um, cheating, as I'm using that term right now, means uh, I have pledged primary relationship to you. I will not uh, engage in, in psychological or physical intimacy with another partner. Uh, you are my partner. You're my principal primary relationship. And someone who violates that implied or actual vow is, quote, cheating, unquote. Why do people do that despite the fact that it is socially scorned um, and often breaks up relationships? Why do people do that anyway? I think one major reason, which you may or may not be aware of, uh, probably you're not aware of it unless you studied lesson one in my website. In my experience, mates who cheat are ruled by a, quote, false self. They are grown wounded children. They have up to six psychological wounds from major childhood trauma, and they don't know it, and they don't want to know it, or even if they do know it, they don't know what to do about it. These wounds are excessive shame, excessive guilt, excessive fear, excessive reality distortion, difficulty trusting, and if you have all those wounds, often you wind up having difficulty bonding. Something that um, is very common in my experience as a person and as a therapist, wounded people, grown wounded children, GWCs, prefer each other as partners. What that often means is couples one of whom is married, and really two wounded people. They are usually lacking in um, vital knowledge about how to evolve and maintain healthy relationships. So, one major ingredient that tends to promote or cause um, extramarital affairs or cheating is one or probably both mates are psychologically wounded and they don't know it. They're ruled by a false self. One thing that means is they have made up to three unwise commitment choices. During courtship, they're needy, we all are, and their needs have overruled their intellect and they lack knowledge to make three wise commitment choices. So one or both mates choose the wrong person to commit to at the wrong time for the wrong reasons. This does not build a strong foundation for a healthy, long-lasting marriage or committed relationship, right? So, two wounded people choosing to commit to each other for up to three wrong reasons apiece. If this is true, often one or both mates will have unhealthy priorities as they attempt to maintain their relationship. What many couples over time have taught me, and my own personal experience bears this out, <clears throat> is that couples who have the best, meaning the most satisfying, mutually satisfying relationships, usually want to put their own dignity and holistic health First, their primary relationship second, 
and everything else third except in emergencies. Wounded people, grown wounded children, often do not do that. They put other things ahead of their primary relationship. So what these three things mean together is one or both mates wind up feeling dissatisfied in the relationship, meaning they are not getting one or more fundamental needs met. A fourth uh, problem that promotes affairs and breakups, psychological or legal divorce, is ignorance. Couples who are ruled by false selves often lack fundamental knowledge of how to maintain healthy, effective, long-lasting relationships. Specifically, in my observation as a therapist working with hundreds of couples, what I observe over and over and over is couples do not know how to communicate and problem solve. They also know, don't know how to think clearly. So, I believe and propose mates cheat because one or both of them are grown wounded children and they don't know it. They've made up to three wrong commitment choices during courtship and they didn't know it. <clears throat> As they've tried to forge and evolve a relationship, they do not put their relationship second and their holistic health and dignity first, and they don't know how to problem solve. They also don't know how to grieve. You put these things together and one or both mates become vulnerable to romantic and or sexual attraction to another person who's sending out signals saying, I'm available or I'm hot for you, and they, and they cheat. A common result of ignorance of these four factors that I've just summarized for you is that society in general and religion to some extent and individuals who have been cheated upon <clears throat> blame the person who cheats. Well, she or he is a scumbag and a lowlife and immoral and a creep and blah, blah, blah. I propose that is really unfair because it takes both mates to cause an unsatisfying relationship. Both mates have to know how to problem solve. Both mates have to heal their psychological wounds. So cheating is a symptom of two wounded, unaware people, not just one. Compare that to what you believe so far. If, you, if there's somebody in your life that have, has had an affair, or has cheated or been cheated upon, think about these points I just offered you and review their situation and see if it changes your way of looking at their situation or your own. The moral here is to help build and evolve and hold healthy relationships. Study lessons one through four in the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. It's free. Thanks for watching.